necessary. I feel kind of stupid in this. And it's hot. What? What? Oh, hello! Are we having a great holiday season? Well, I sure am. And on this Christmas special of ALTV, we've got a big surprise for you all. So, ho ho ho, welcome to the show! Okay, let me ask you all a question. What would have been the greatest year in regards of game releases in the history of the Atari ST? That's what we're gonna find out today. And to help me in my quest, I am... Guys, this isn't gonna work, I feel stupid. No, it's... this... I'm not doing this, no. This is way better. But there's room for one more improvement. Yeah. I love Christmas and all, but enough is enough. So as I was saying, to check out which was the best Atari ST Christmas, I need to open this cupboard. So let's do this. This, my friends, is my collection of classic computer magazines. And to help me in my quest, we're gonna look through the biggest selling Atari ST magazine on the planet. ST format, of course. So I'm now gonna take every December issue from 1988 till 1994, check out which games were reviewed during the Christmas period, pick a favorite, and ultimately decide which Christmas was the best for an Atari ST gamer. And that's not all! I have invited some very special guests on this Christmas episode, to help me decide which games are the best. So join me in this quest, let's have some fun. We begin our journey in 1988, and honestly, in 88 there was no ST format. We had ST Amiga format. And a year later, Future Publishing decided to split both brands into two separate magazines. Now, the December issue of ST Amiga format contained 8 Atari ST game reviews. And what a selection of games we had. Power Drum, which could be considered the 16-bit version of Wipeout. The Cinemaware Classic Rocket Ranger. The fantastic Pac-Mania. The strategic shooter SDI. The 8-bit classic Driller, made it to the 16-bit platform. The well-known classic Battle Chess. And finally, we had Speedball by the almighty Bitman Brothers, the prequel to one of the best two-player games the Atari ST had to... Aha! You know what that means? Our first guest has arrived. People, I would like to present to you Thomas Ilk, creator of games such as Frogs, Anarcho Ride and Laser Ball. Thomas, as we discuss... the secret headquarters of the Anarcho Ride Laboratories. Here, we are working on bringing back the Atari ST and TOS as the main computing platform. For that, we released games. What is he doing? Why and how is way too difficult to explain to ordinary humans. No, but Thomas, as discussed, we want to know what your favorite Christmas game of 1988 is. Christmas! I told you it's Christmas outside! You really can't get the stuff. Huh? But back to games, I mean, I never was a gamer. Um, but around 1998, I made my own Christmas game. It was shit. Yeah, no, but Thomas, that's not what we agreed to. But today, I mean, today things are different. Today, I want to talk about Frogs. Frogs version 1.2. It has so many new features. I mean, it has a vastly superior frame rate than any Frogs version before. And it has scrolling, 2x scrolling. 
on an STE, I must admit, still it's all based on GFA Basic. No, Thomas, please, that's not what the episode is about. But this is a world first for Anarcho Ride Laboratories. We have scrolling. And of course, it has all the features of the 1.1 release, like the arcade mode and the automatic AI. And finally, you get a setup program, so you can actually customize your frog session. So with frogs, we think we have the perfect tool to bring people back to the Atari ST platform. Oh, God damn it, Thomas, you promised not to do this. Well, okay then, I will pick my favorite Christmas game of 1988. We had some really cool releases, but the obvious choice for me would still be Speedball. While Speedball was not as good as its sequel, it's still a classic Bitmap Brothers game with good gameplay and a legendary soundtrack. There are a lot of things to love. And after playing Xenon, I would really be happy to have a game like Speedball underneath my Christmas tree, that's for sure. Now, let's move on to 1989. By 1989, we had the first standalone SD format magazine. The whole crew of SD Amiga format went over to SD format and Amiga format became a completely new magazine. And by December of that year, 17 games got reviewed. And no, these two were not part of it. More on that later. But here are some of the highlights of that Christmas month. The classic Houston platformer Onslaught with graphics from Nigel Brown John, who also gave us Verminator. Red Storm Rising, strategy from Microprose. The amazing strategy game Tower of Babel. Michael Jackson's Moonwalker, totally different from the Sega classic. Day of the Pharaoh, a great title for a mediocre game. The beautiful graphic adventure Future Wars, Sega's Shinobi. Billy and Jimmy Return in Double Dragon 2 which is actually a really nice port of the classic brawler. And finally worth mentioning, Pro Tennis Tour. A super fun tennis game. Ah yes, it's almost at the... Oh, well who might that be? Let's check it out. <coughs> Sorry, what? What? What do you mean Atari Legends on the other end? When? Now? Oh, uh, that wasn't supposed to happen. It shouldn't be too big a problem. Can we call him back? Okay. People, as my second guest, I invited Darren Doyle. Darren is the author of the Atari ST Gamer magazine and more recently the unofficial Atari Visual History. Is he ready now? Okay, okay. Well, hello, Darren. Welcome to the show. I'm gonna go straight to the question. Tell us what is your favorite Christmas game of 1989? Well, Mary, I have to say, between you and me, that's not really a hell of a lot of titles to choose from, really, is it? Like, you know, why couldn't you have chosen some more? So no more we could have fitted in here? Like, what's going on over there? What, what, what are you doing? What? Are you serious? There has to be one game you like, right? Hey, I know what. If you'd like to check out more than then 17 titles that you've included in this list, uh, I've just uh, released an amazing new book. I'm so excited about it, I can't say it enough. Oh no, not again. Uh, the unofficial Terry Visual History book. Yeah, Darren, I know it is an amazing book, but that's not why I invited you over here. Come on. But over 150 game reviews from where it all started the Atari 8 bit computer. Absolutely fantastic. Oh, you have to check it out now. It's amazing, brilliant. I can't say enough about it. I'm, I'm so stoked about the book. No, Darren, enough about the book now. Just please pick a game. Any game. Just help me out here. Yes, thanks for having me on the show on your Christmas Atari Legends show. Absolutely honored. Ooh, look at me. Um, what? You know, I just want to wish everybody a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year for me, and I hope that 2020 brings loads of great things to Atari scene and you. Oh, that's it for me. Bye. You're kidding me, right? Seriously. Oh. Well, I guess it's up to me then. Okay. 
But before I pick a game, I want to talk about one more thing. You have to keep in mind that in 1989, Michael Jackson was really big over here in Belgium. And MTV was playing two things for months in a row. That was Smooth Criminal by Michael Jackson and License to Kill by Gladys Knight over and over again. I had played the game Moonwalker for quite a bit on my friend Sega and I thought the game was pretty cool and I think a lot of people went that Christmas for the Michael Jackson craze and bought Moonwalker for their home computer and oh boy I bet they were disappointed. The game didn't have any resemblance with the Genesis classic, not at all. But that all being said, my favorite Christmas game of 1989 by far would be Future Wars. This was the first in the series of Delphian Cinematique graphic adventure games and it could easily compete with the big companies like Sierra Online or LucasArts. Future Wars featured beautiful graphics by none other than Eric Shahi, who would later move on to create another world. And the game was followed by Operation Stealth, another fantastic graphic adventure game. Future Wars was written by Paul Cousin and featured a funny and intriguing science fiction story about time travel and aliens. It's highly recommended. And who can forget the classic box art and the funny window washing intro. So 1989 was definitely a better Christmas than 1988. But let's move on and see what the other years had to offer. We have finally reached the 90s. And Christmas 1990 was the biggest in numbers for an Atari ST gamer but that doesn't necessarily mean it was the best. ST Format released issue number 17 that December and it was one of the biggest issues ever with over 200 pages. They reviewed 27 games. It would be impossible for me to cover them all, but let's quickly go over the highlights. Spin Dizzy Worlds is the follow up to the classic Spin Dizzy and in my opinion a hidden gem on the Atari ST. It's a super fun cross between a platform game and marble madness and it gets a well deserved ST format gold. The first encounter with the crazy codfish James Pond in the platform classic by Millennium. Shadow of the Beast arrives, a dreadful port of the Amiga classic of a pretty bad platform game to begin with. Voodoo Nightmare, a platform strategy game that I never ever understood. One of the best run and gunners arrives on the ST, that is, until the release of a sequel. The Commodore 64 classic by Manfred Trans Turrican is converted to the Atari ST and it's just amazing. Dragon Breed turns out to be a pretty decent conversion of the arcade classic, a really fun shoot 'em up. Spider Man from Empire is another one of those hidden treasures. A puzzle action game nobody has played but it's highly recommended. Strider 2 arrives on the ST before the actual arcade release. It's a pretty good action platformer with colorful graphics and great animation. It's just not as fun as Turrican. The James Bond game The Spy Who Loved Me is released after License to Kill, which is pretty odd, but it turns out to be the best Bond game on the Atari ST. A very hard game, but very rewarding. The mediocre side-scrolling shooter UN Squadron. Atomic RoboKit turns out to be another fun platformer. The amazingly atmospheric and detailed adventure game BOT from Ubisoft. This game came with its own sound card. The amazingly detailed and realistic tank simulation game M1 Tank Platoon by Microprose, which is probably too complex for most game enthusiasts. And finally, the truly horrible arcade racer Fire and Forget 2 by Titus. Yes, as you can see, my Christmas bulb is ready. I've invited another special guest and let's hope he has more to say than those other two bozos we heard before. To help me pick a favorite game, I have invited Aurélien Vaillant, or better known as Wasabim. He is best known for the wonderful art he has been creating in the Atari ST scene, especially focusing on Atari ST box art. I'm ready. Is he ready? Why aren't the Christmas lights coming on? Okay. 
Oh, he's calling by phone. Okay, that's something new. Let's try this. I'll put it on speaker. Hello, Aurelien. What is your favorite game? Hello, Marty. This is Wazabin. Sorry, I am stuck in the old man or for the holidays. I don't have time to talk about games. I need to find the murderer of Julia. Winter is coming. See you soon. What is this? No, seriously, what is this? I mean, come on, I know it's an artsy fartsy guy, but this? Is he stuck in a Lankor game or what? Why is nobody taking this show serious? I feel like being screwed over by the whole scene, god. <laughs>